thing. So what I'm going to do for you today is one of my little exercises that I'm going to show you how I build onto it and just get my momentum. It starts simply, bass drum, hi-hat, snare, cross stick. The simplicity of it is that I can go anywhere I want. I do eights, I do sixteenths, I do dots, and triplets. And every now and then the cowbell sneaks in when it's not supposed to. Ah. It also started many years ago by a thing I called the locomotion. Because I was next to a train track where I lived for most of my life, young life that is. We had this thing we used to listen to the train. Woo, choo, choo, choo. And woo, hoo, hoo, hoo. Chicka, 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 chicka. That was my motivation for so long, for so many years. I liked that sound. So I worked out exercises for that sound. And I used to call everything my locomotion. And as time went on, my sound became my rhythm. Sometimes we think of them as melodies. But the worst kind of melodies that you have is rhythm melodies. So don't let nobody fool you. <laughs> Single note melodies will always be around. But rhythm melodies work, especially for drummers, because we get a chance to do everything. Part of something that I do, few of you have heard it on the James Brown's records, on the B.B. King records, on Aretha's records. But that locomotion doesn't change on so many hundreds of other records that are out there. Still the same type feel. No matter where I go with it, it's always the same. But the main thing, and I'll say this very dearly, always remember where one is. Now, I'm gonna put all those things to use. Oh, but
I intensify myself, especially on the cowbell, because I like Latin. When I work with my cymbals, I always try to do counter rhythms. This way it doesn't get in the way of the drums. But the cymbals brings about the color and the taste that you want. Ah, da, boo. Ah, da. I'm gonna try it again. I think some of you might remember the disco era. 
so I'm going to bring you up to it. Never forgetting where you started. Time. Now you go back to your relaxing mode. In the mode, the mode, the mode. And I'm just going to add just a little bit, just a little teeny tiny bit of the purdy. Purdy Shuffle started many, 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 many moons ago. But the best part of the Purdy Shuffle is we've got to remember one thing. The slower you do it, the more effective it is. Try never to do it like this. Oh. Purdy Shuffle consists of two bars. It's a two-bar phrase. If you think about it as a two-bar phrase, you'll come out with everything that you need. Eight notes. Quarter notes. Half notes. Whole. Eight, six, deep. Dotted. Triplets. And the rebound. With the ghost notes, you're controlling them. When you control them, you always know where everything is. your ghost notes because they're only supposed to be there for support. They're not to take the place of what your main significant part is, is your time, your feel, your attitude. Don't forget all of them. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, like Aldo was saying, I'm actually a drum set player, so I'm, like most of you guys, I started playing drum set when I was pretty young. Uh, I have a family's Lebanese, and I was about four, my father gave me a derbaki, an Arabic drum, and we were just kind of, they played folk music, it wasn't anything really fancy or special. But from that point on, I started playing drum set. One thing led to another, and uh, when you're in a situation like this, 
it's very, very exciting to see different people. But you have to know that it only takes one real rhythm to have a life. It's not a big candy store. Even though I look like I might be the biggest um, offender <laughs> of some of those things, I know for one thing, having one solid rhythm that makes sense in your life that helps you, gives you permission to do a lot of things. I teach at four different colleges now, and uh, many of the kids know all the information, but they don't have ownership of one thing. So that's good. If you could do that one thing, you could spin a fantastic web from that. Um, let's see here. Because I play drum set and because uh, I'm not really a congero and I'm not really a djembe player, I um, decided to try to use the drums in a different way and it's all an extension of, for me, of uh, a fascination I had with South Indian music, which is more of a finger technique. So since I wasn't raised playing congas or djembe, my hands, I would get a bad sound and my hands would hurt on top of it and I wasn't as uh, available to play the instruments I was really focusing on. So one of the things that I guess I'll talk about more as we go on maybe during the week and now is the split finger technique, which al allows you to um, take a variety of instruments like these frame drums or this instrument here, uh, ocean drums, and which this is. This is an ocean drum, which I kind of, uh, I didn't want to lose the sound of that, so I, I cut a hole in the back and cut a hole in the screen door at home. And um, took the screen and put it on there so I could still get that sound, but it was ported now, so it had more of a, a, more of a bass sound than a regular ocean drum without so much confusion in that sound, and I mounted it inside a drum. And most of us were, and the Brazilians were, I took my inspiration from the Brazilians when it came to trying to just manipulate sound as opposed to playing a particular instrument so well. I learned to play things that I like the sound of, so. And the split finger technique really helped. So if everyone would just take a look at their playing hand, if you're right-handed, Take your strongest hand. Don't kid yourself about like, oh, I sometimes I bat lefty and righty. You know, take your strongest hand. <laughs> and if it's a three, that's three. And one is like that. And just stretch it out over your leg. And relax your elbow and let it fall. So your fingers are stretched out over your leg. So you just get reminded that that's really the grouping you're going to use. Then shake your hand out. If you don't play relaxed doing anything in your life, this is a good way to start because it's, 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 got a, it's kind of got a low admission fee and you can learn to play. And uh, as you get older, it's kind of an elegant thing to augment what you're doing on your drum set or whatever it is, you're, what else you're playing. Now, with, I know you don't have a, a drum right now, but you can use a book, anything, to start to get going. And a simple frame drum, like these are made from Cooperman. Uh, these are made from uh, Remo makes these. LP makes some some frame drums and, and dumbbacks and different instruments. So anything in that order will work. And you can even put a djembe on your lap like this. But the main idea is if you just maybe keep a quarter note and you start sliding up and down and it hit. Just raise your index finger like an inhale on the way up and come down. And you have to get as much lift as you can from the joints here. So you're going to be playing this kind of technique. It's much more... Um, the preliminary steps are really, really basic. And if you can imagine that, in the end, if you can think that your hand and your wrist were in a ball bearing kind of situation where you couldn't bend your wrist this way. You could only spin it this way. And you're spinning on an axis that comes out from here rather than here. Because if you spun from here, this finger wouldn't move. So it's like that. And so it spins that way, just like that. 
If you think about throwing your thumb front and facing the sky with your palm, you think about throwing your thumb this way, keeping the back of your wrist straight, and you can just sit there and go, ch -ch -ch -ch, throwing your thumb. Your thumb is the boss. You throw them in and out. And then the other thing that really is useful, once you do that, play groups of four. Learn how to play groups of four. If you can learn how to play a group of four, starting with three, for starters, it's an upstroke. So, accent one, accent four. One. Some people can't see my hand, okay? And then maybe put them together. My wrist is straight, I'm throwing my thumb out, I'm throwing it back. One, two, three, four, one, two. If it's too slow to double, slow it down. Just clap for me, lightly, someone just, right? That alone will do you a lot of good. And the other thing is that you can always throw your thumb in place of your index finger, which really helps. This is a, a larger frame drummer. It would be a baron if it had a cross stick. So, so I was going three, one, three, one. Remember, this is three, this is one. Three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, one. Three, one. I can throw my thumb in place of my index finger. And then inside of this, because it wasn't an ocean drum, but it was tunable, which we haven't figured out exactly how to make a tunable ocean drum yet, I put some bells on the bottom. This way I can... Another simple way to augment it is just really fool around with muting and bass sounds. If you just sit there for a half hour one day, just, just do this. Fool around with making a bass sound, swing, same stroke, just let your thumb whack it. Don't let your thumb mute it, let it make a bass sound. If you take that technique and then that same technique, which re for me comes from South Indian drumming, if you take that same technique and you apply it to an instrument, which is, this is made by Cooperman. Uh, Remo makes one as well, and um, the real one has an endangered species as its playing head, which is, some, is a, it's a water lizard uh, from South Indian, this, and it's not tunable in a sense that this is. Those are made very high pitched and in order to bring the pitch down, you sprinkle water in them constantly. So you usually play with two or three of them, so one of them is at the place you want it. But uh, since uh, uh, Remo and Cooperman have figured this out, and I'm not sure if LP has done one yet, but um, so you tune with one hand. This is called a kanjira.
Thanks. If, if I could actually play Pandero, this would, you could play this as a Pandero, but I won't attempt. This was the instrument I came up with. Uh, it's called a Hegira. And um, so it has zills down here. Maybe some of you know Glenn Velez, Glenn Velez is playing, but he's taken the North African and the Arabic style of playing, and he understands that very well. And, and you can uh, play this as a rick in a certain way. You can tune it up very high as well. So you have these jingles like this. If you play it in this position, you can play it as a kanjira by muting these. And just same idea. And the other idea is like the pandero. So, And uh, one of the other things that I found is really, really useful. These are not normal brushes, and they're not made out of straw. They're made out of grass. And it um, <laughs> reminds me of a joke, but I can't say it. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> after. So if you're playing, 